Firstly, sir, congratulations for arranging this program. I am Advocate Shivaji Sapkar from Bid, Maharashtra. This program is peace for all over. I get the opportunity to ask a question, but my question is not related to Quran. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, there are uh, lacks of Marathi speakers. I also Marathi. What is the role of IRF, means Islamic Research Foundation? What IRF doing for Marathi or non-Muslims? So that was a very good question. Since we are living in the state of Maharashtra, he's asking what are we doing as far as Marathi is concerned? And what are we doing for non-Muslims? As far as Marathi is concerned, I'll be very frank with you. We want to do, but we aren't doing much. There are some of my books being translated to Marathi by others, because I can understand Marathi, but I can't speak Marathi. I mean, I should be able to do it. We are trying to make our children speak many languages, but I can understand Marathi, but I can't speak. A little bit, I can, but I don't master the language. Uh, maybe then I would have given lectures in Marathi also. But we have some speakers in IRF who give lectures in Marathi. We have Brother Abdul Ghafur Qureshi. Whenever there's a request to speak in Marathi, we send him. So what we are doing, we are training people to speak and convey the message of peace in different languages. The training program is in English. And many people know three, four languages. So the training program is in English, sometimes in Urdu and Hindi. Then he goes, if he's coming from South Africa, from Africa, then he speaks in the African language. Many people are coming from other parts of the world. From Malaysia, they have come. They have come from USA. They have come from Singapore, from Saudi Arabia, from Philippines, Tagalog. I don't know Tagalog. What I do? I convey the message in English. I tell the people to convey in Tagalog. I am requesting you, brother, convey my message, what you have learned here, heard here, to those people who know Marathi. You'll be doing a favor to me. Yes, yes, sir. Inshallah. That's the first question. Come to the second question. What are we doing for non-Muslims? Again, we aren't doing much. Whatever limited we can do, there's so much to be done. The organization is big, mashallah. We have got more than 2,000 volunteers. Yet I'm saying we are doing nothing. We are a very small organization. Very small. We have organized this conference. We are giving first chance to non-Muslims. Because you are a VIP guest, a special guest. You, today, are more closer to me than the other Muslims. Why? Because I have to convey, the, Allah will ask me on the Day of Judgment, have I conveyed the message or not. So I'm trying my level best to convey personally on this level. Furthermore, this conference, the 10-day conference, we have invited non-Muslims and we mentioned in the posters, all faith welcome, people of all religion welcome. But in question and succession, we give them first preference. We give them priority. So that the doubts can be cleared. Even the Muslims have got doubts. The Muslims, they get angry with me. Brother Zakir, what about us? Afterwards, kal dekh lenge, no problem. Kal matab, abhi kal ne, ab dal din ke baad dekh lenge. So what we have, besides giving the message here, maybe there are tens of thousands of people here now. Mashallah, tens of thousands of people. But there are more than 60 million people watching live. But yet, we are doing nothing. IRF per se, Islam Research Foundation, what we should do, we are doing very little. But we are trying our level best. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may accept our humble effort that we are doing in trying to spread his message to the world. Hope that answers the question. We show all the best for your organization, sir. Uh, yes, brother, the next question. My name is Sahil. I'm a graphic designer. I'm a poet. May peace be on you, Dr. Zakir. I always wanted to say this. I've got a chance by God's grace today. I love you, Dr. Zakir. I love you very, very much. And I thank you. May peace be on you too, brother. And I thank you I too for... love you, brother. I too love you, brother. Thank you. And I thank you for the ample amount of knowledge I've got going through your lectures from my friends, from my sister, Nagma. And there's a slight bit of confusion uh, between the word of God and the people who believe the concept of Judgment Day. 
like there is a small question we believe like like the muslims believe that on the judgment day the dead will be put life in them and some of the muslims believe that it will be on the first night in the grave that the dead will be put life and there'll be azab and questions and answers in in the grave so i just wanted to clarify this that's it the brother asked the question that the difference of opinion will life be put on the day of judgment on the day of judgment resurrected or will it be in the cover brother if you read the hadith that is mentioned of the azab of cover allah says in the quran in surah imran chapter number 3 verse 185 that kullu nafsin zaikatul maut every soul shall have a taste of death but the final recompense will be on the day of judgment this life is just mere chattels of play and deception but the final hisab kitab final judgment is on the day of judgment what we have to do we may get part of the punishment in this world part of the reward in this world part of the reward in the qabr part of the azab in the qabr but the final ultimate judgment is on the day of judgment the final total of good and bad will be recorded on the day of judgment and then based on your deeds you will either go to heaven or hell some of this will be given in this world some in the grave but the final accounting will be on day of judgment hope that answers the question thank you yes sister hi i'm an american student studying culture and theology and i have a question you said jesus never claims his divinity and that jesus was only here for Jews but the bible says tell us if you are the christ the son of god and jesus replied yes it is as you say and then in matthew 28 18 through 20 jesus says to his disciples all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age sister has quoted two verses from the bible the first one from mr taken you said that jesus claimed that you are son of god did you say that sister yes sir son of god and second she said that jesus said go to all the nations what she is quoting is the ending last portion of the gospel of matthew if you go earlier sister it's mentioned in the gospel of matthew chapter number 15 verse number 24 he says to the apostles that i have been sent not but to the lost sheep of the house of israel what you quoted according to the scholars of the bible what they say that is an interpolation but whether it is or not i don't argue but then there's a contradiction in the bible the bible clearly mentions in the gospel of matthew chapter number 10 verse number 5 and 6 jesus christ peace be upon him says to the apostles go ye not into the way of the gentiles go ye not in the way of the non jews the hindus the muslims but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of israel as far as the first question is concerned that jesus christ peace be upon him said that i am the son of god sister do you know in the bible god has got sons by the tons adam was the son of god abraham was son of god israel was son of god all those they are led by the spirit of god they are sons of god so if you are a righteous person you are a son of god if i am a righteous person i am a son of god that is the language of the bible as far as calling son of god to a righteous person i do agree that since prophet jesus was the messenger of god he should be called the son of god but what do the christian missionary say no 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 he is not a normal son he is the begotten son and they quote the bible gospel of john chapter number 3 verse number 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so what we have to realize that this verse of the bible begotten son according to the faidu scholars of the highest eminence of 50 corporate denominations if you read the rsv revised standard version they say this word begotten is interpolation is a concoction is a fabrication and the turn of the bible so jesus is not the begotten son because begotten means 
it belongs to an action of animals of lower level so he is verily the son of god son meaning a righteous person we have no objection but he is not the begotten son lam minat wa lam yulad he begets not nor is begotten help the answer the question wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin jazaka allah khair we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this program possible we know you have many questions but there are time limitations to the program we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only for making this program possible but for creating this opportunity for a better understanding on the topic for the millions of people too other than those present here watching us on television who may inshallah share some of the learnings from this talk and question and answer sessions to others less aware for them to gain better understanding and hidayah too we thank all who have contributed and made this program practically possible for all present here today and for its telecast and those who have come to attend this program jazakallah khair